Okay, let's take a look at Hangman. Now I've set it out so that we've got the list that we were looking at in class as well. So, welcome message. Let's print out Welcome to Hangman. Punctuated properly. Speech marks, close brackets. Right, so a print output something. But why don't we put a little bit of flair into this welcome message? Let's put some tabs in. So sort of bring it into the screen a little bit more. No, that's not what I want to go with. Bring it into the screen a bit more. Will you guess the word? Before you run out of lives. Okay, gives us a bit of space. So that'll tab it in. Let's try it. Let's press F5, let's save it. Let's call it something we'll remember. Hang on. It's not a keyword, so we should be fine. Save. Hangman. Welcome to Hangman. And that's where my tab is. So I might be okay with one. right at the end to space it out a little bit more. So what I'm doing is once I'm happy with the words that I want to use I'm going to try and space everything out a little bit neater on the screen. So the next thing I need to do is, that's a bit better, gives a nice big gap underneath. So let's put one at the top as well to balance it with the restart. And maybe a couple, that'll work. Alright so let's pick a word. We'll take a look at that one the next time we press F5. So, words. First off, we need a bank of words that we can work through. So we're going to use a list. Now this isn't a normal data type, this is a data structure because it's going to store more than one word in one variable. So it's got the identifier words and it's going to store more than one value. So let's think of some at the top of our heads. Let's go with hangman, coding, print. These could be your films of choice or your TV program, your songs, your artists, whatever you fancy. To make this one easier though, I'm going to make sure that they don't have spaces in between them and we'll build up from that as an extension afterwards. Ooh, I've got the speech marks. You can always tell when it starts to go um, slightly wrong in the fact that it doesn't have... Oh, there you go, it's gone green at the end there instead of black. Let's see what it does. End of line while scanning. So it couldn't find the end of the word that we just finished because it didn't have the speech mark. They become easier to spot over time and I do promise you that. You'll start noticing when you've not closed a speech marks, or the brackets hasn't closed, or you'll start noticing when things don't happen the way you want it to. That space works out quite well. Perhaps a tab in the front as well. Tab. We'll put one back in here to move it across another one. So it brings it into the screen a bit more. Right. So if we've got this list of words and we only want to pick one, we want to complete that word at random. I don't want to have to purposefully choose it every time somebody runs my program. So let's let Python deal with that for us. We can import a module known as random. Now this has a lot of things in with it. You can shuffle a list and everything on this one. We're just going to get to randomly choose or select a random choice from that list of words. So we need to tell it that that's where it's coming from. That should generate us a random word. Oh, that intro is much better. Much better than just a static welcome to hangman print. Right, let's print it. It's going to be for debug for the time being, but let's see what our word is to begin with. F5. Just make sure it works. Print. Hee <laughs> Print. Printed the word print. So, we've then got to start the loop, ask for a guess, and check to see if it's correct or if it's wrong check to see if we've won or check to see if we've lost. So we can keep adding words to this list, it makes no difference, a comma every time in between them, speech marks around each separate word, and we add a bit more randomness to it each and every time because the longer the list is the more likely it is that the random function will choose a different word each time. So if we've chosen the random word we need to know whether or not We've lost. We should definitely go on the lost route first. So there are going to be, oops, there's going to be two ways that we end the game. 
so we need to turn word into dashes. I missed that one. How did I forget it? Turn the word into dashes. So for every letter in the word, so we're going to for loop around the word. If you haven't seen the video um, loops of power or something similar to that one, you might want to check that one out to see what that for loop is doing. So we're going to print a dash for every single letter. Ooh, no, no, I, I, I don't want to enable dictation, thank you. It's okay. Okay, input. For the I, I've got a dash. For the N, I've got a dash. For P, I've got the dash. For U and the T. Okay, well that's perfect. But I don't really want them on top of each other. I want them in a long line. So I'm going to have to store this as a variable. So dashes is equal to, well it's nothing to begin with, um, but it is going to now be equal to whatever it was before plus another dash. So for every time it goes through a letter it's going to add a dash to the variable called dashes or the variable with the identifier dashes. So print dashes. Let's take a look. It's got that indent into it so that it's only going to print it out once after the for loop has been completed. So let's try it out. Let's see if this now is all in one line. Perfect. I'm going to leave the word print there for a time being just while I error checking and debugging but I'm quite happy that dashes is printed out. Again we can make it look a lot smarter by using what we know about print in the fact that we can add text and we can add strings in front of, around the outside of, any variable. So let's try pushing this further onto the screen. Dashes. Let's see if this looks better. F5. Print word to guess. There we go. It makes it a little bit easier to see rather than being, well, jumbled up with everything else really. So the loop starts. Now there are two ways that this loop should end, okay? If we've won and if we've lost. So while there's still dashes in the variable called dashes, we've not won. Because as soon as dashes runs out of those, <laughs> well, those dashes, we've lost. Well no, as soon as dashes runs out of dashes, we've won. Yes! While they're still in there, we're still playing. We've still got lessons, letters to guess. If there is a dash in the variable dashes, we've not won yet. Perfect. But that's not the only win condition. One of the win conditions is whether or not we've won out of lives or we've hung ourselves. So lives, if we start it off, equals 10. So while there are still dashes in dashes and lives is greater than zero, so we've not run out of lives, uh, lives greater than zero. We've not lost or run out of lives. Brilliant. So, e. while that's still the case, while we've still got dashes left to guess and we've still got lives, we need to ask for them. So inside this while loop, because we want it to happen every single time they start a turn, then I'm going to guess an input. Um, how am I going to ask them? What letter will you guess? Let's put the space in there. Well actually, should I show you what it's like without it? Let's do it. Let's press F5. It's all about user features when input and print, to be fair to it, because now when I make the guess, which I know is input, because I still print it out and I'll take it out later, what letter will you guess? While I haven't got that space, it's right up against the question mark. And it will be every single time. Which is not easy to spot. It's not the nicest thing to have to fill in every single time. So, let's put a new line after each one to space them all out. And put a space in there to make it a little bit nicer on the eye. Should we take a look? Might as well. So it's spaced it out underneath the word to guess. Now I'm guessing repetition, so let's go with so I want one that's existing or not existing. It doesn't make too much difference yet because we haven't put the code in. So check if it's correct. 
Well, if the guess that we make, the one that they've just input, is in the word, the random word that was chosen right at the beginning, well, they were. They were correct. Brilliant. Fantastic. A lucky guess. Let's be very sarcastic with them. Yes. Love it. Let's see. Well, what your word looks like now? Why not? It's all about making the user feel better. Ooh. There was a clue there. Every time I press enter now, I'm not getting the tabs that I was expecting. And it's because I've not closed that bracket. So there are clues when you're typing in Python. If you're expecting it to go directly underneath and you press enter and it doesn't, take a look at the previous line. So if it's wrong, if the guess isn't in the word, we're going to come down to this else. In this case, there's no sort of half right guess. They're either right or they're wrong. So we're going to take away a live. So, because they're wrong, so wrong. If you have, and let's close the speech marks, comma, lives, comma, speech mark, remaining. So we're going to tell them how many lives they've got remaining. And luckily, because we've put it in our while loop, so while it's still above zero, it's still going to keep going through. Let's try it. This should be us getting the end of our game for if we've... Right, so let's guess outside of coding. You have nine remaining. If I get one... Is in there. Lucky guess. That works too. Brilliant. But let's see what happens. And I can guess the left, same letter over and over again. You have one remaining, you have none remaining, and it kicks you out. Yes! So we have lost, because our lives are greater than zero. Or equal to zero in this case. So have we lost? Well, yes, if our lives is equal to zero, if it's equal to, because of uh, zero, print, well, we want some kind of game over. We want to kind of encourage them to do it again and just have another go. So nice try. And let's put some spacing into it. So a couple of new lines and a couple of tabs. Might want a couple of new lines after it as well. Just to space everything out. Let's try it. F5. We've got to lose again. We know how competitive I am. I never like to lose. Ooh. Didn't want to be typing them in there. Why didn't that move me onto the shelf? Right. The word is print. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Game over. Nice try. <laughs> 